You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To decline this call, hang up. Well, 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 as I live and breathe, it's Little Miss Dirty. How are you today? Well, that explains why I haven't heard from anybody. You know, those... The uh, secure system, sometimes, I guess they may be overwhelmed or something like that. But communication is extremely important on both sides. It helps the, the loved ones on the outside, and it helps the loved ones on the inside. So they need to make sure these things work. And going down like that, everything you lost it. Well, okay. Yeah, so you have to reboot it. Oh my goodness. See, and, that, and that's one thing that bothers me too, because when you switched over from JPay, a lot of information was lost. Yeah, I know. And, you know, for me, I really enjoy music. It, it helps me to relax. And I, I was talking with a coworker who said rock and roll just, it, it relates to him. And he, he listens to songs about murder and rape and, and suicide. But for him to listen to people sing about that is as close as he's going to get to it because it's expressing his feelings and it, and it calms him down. I, I mean, I think it's kind of odd because for me to listen to songs about rape doesn't necessarily motivate me or calm me down, but it works for him. And for people that are sitting in the prison, there's not really too much that you guys are going to do. But if you get depressed or sad or or you just want to escape reality, music is a very good way to do that. And I've even had people recommend some of the classics, and I mean classics like Bach and Beethoven. Really? You downloaded two of them? And so how does that make you feel when you listen to them? Well, did you lose those? Oh, yeah, they didn't switch over from gay pay. Oh. And you spend all that money, and guess who gets the money? They could at least refund you or give you some credit. Yeah, I know. that I, I do like that Securus is allowing some free phone calls because I've been able to get more calls from people because of that. But when the tablets are down, yeah. Well, how's, how's it going over there? Is everybody able to get back up? So process? Uh well, I'm glad you were able to get through. It's nice to, to talk to you. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll give her the message, let her know that uh, everything's okay. You're taking some classes and getting involved. Good, good. Yeah, keep, keep talking to your family. I mean, we can't call you. Right. Yeah, I, I know. Well, and, you know, there's another thing issue too with these tablets because if they put you on restriction and you can't call out they're acting as if there's never going to be an emergency and i know one washington policy was changed because i was complaining that they were saying that you guys needed to uh contact us if there's been a change and my friend said what if i'm on restriction and i can't call you know, they should have at least been allowed to go into a counselor's office or something like that and make a call and say, you know, there's, there's something changed. Don't visit me today. But they changed the policy. So now it's the responsibility of the staff to contact us if there's a change. You know, if I get ready to drive 300 miles to go visit somebody and there was a, a change. You have 60 seconds remaining. I should uh, I should have been able to at least been notified or something. <clears throat> hello? Hello? Are you there? Hey, Dirty. Hello, I am Joel Wilborn, and this is AQS Inmate Call. This particular episode is dealing with communication on the outs. We have a system where we can do email and we can receive 
calls from the people that are incarcerated. And it's done through Securus. And it's one package for everything there. And if Securus goes down, email doesn't leave or they can't get any. And same thing with phone calls. On paper, it sounds fantastic. But in the real world, there's a lot of little glitches. And just recently, a lot of folks uh, lost their um, music and games and stuff they had paid for and downloaded. And I, I have a big issue with that. Now, some of the states are, are working with uh, contractors and, and working with family members, and they're trying to keep the line of communication open. There is a lot of trauma in prison. And I know folks have a difficulty believing it, but if a man beats up, you know, seriously assaults a woman and then goes to prison, there's a little trauma there because it hit him. I'm locked up. I did this to a person I care about. And they're not sitting around saying, I, I was mistreated or I was, uh, justice didn't serve me properly. They're thinking about the crime. They're thinking about their current situation and they're thinking about what happened to them. And that's one of the things we want to happen in prison. Instead of assuming that a prison isn't doing what it's supposed to do, especially a correctional institution, we need to think, what if these prisons are working? What if folks are going in there getting the treatment they're supposed to receive and leaving a better person. What if that's actually going on? I don't think it's fair to lock a person up, no matter what the crime, forever. Especially one where there's a death sentence. We need to get better sentencing. We need to try to help the people that are locked up. Let them know that we care. We want you to be out in the community with us and we want you to succeed. Now, I don't think we should be giving people handouts because that really doesn't help. You know, a person who goes to get food stamps and gets uh, medical attention and, and rent subsidies, they may tend to not want to go to work. They tend to think that everything needs to be given to them. We need to help them get a job, help them balance their budget, help them choose the right life insurance, or maybe they want to invest in 401k. And we can't assume that everybody has the same training and same background as we have. So when we have a system like Securus where people are communicating with the outside world, that's where a lot of the information is picked up. You know, if grandma is very ill, that could cause some tra trauma within the, the prison. And, you know, the, the uh, incarcerated person is going to want to know what's going on. You can't be there. So... The telephone, email, that's that's his lifeline. And when a prison says, oh, you did a bad thing, we're going to block you for six months. That, that right there, I've had my personal experience with that. It's not good. It causes a lot of problems. And yes, I did have an issue. I did complain about it. And they did change the policy where the, the staff are now supposed to contact people. To say that it's the incarcerated person's responsibility to contact me when they're put on restriction that's stupid because I can't call over there and start grabbing information and I talk to hundreds of, of incarcerated people across the nation for me to call the, the prison and say this person can't talk to me that that's that's dumb have they need to contact me you know the, you know, the person that you've been talking to is on restriction for three months and, uh, I'll let you know when they're off okay that I can understand and that's what we need to do but still take away rec time uh, put them in the hole I don't know quit blocking communication 
it's bad enough. You know, these people, they don't do anything wrong, but if they pick up their tablet to make a call and it's not working, you 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 have a problem that's a technical issue that's creating a sanction. You know, folks that want to call their loved one, but they broke one of the rules and they're restricted from making phone calls. They can't make a phone call. And then people who did nothing wrong, they're doing everything in the world so they can talk to their kids. They're, they're following the rules. They're taking the classes. They're trying to impress the officials so that they don't lose their time and then they can't make a call. Or they'll lose some stuff. So something that could happen just out of the blue shouldn't be used as a punishment. That is just plain dumb. And that's one of the things as a prison advocate I fight for. I want folks that are locked up to feel that there's something to come out to and a reason to stay out. And this business of communicating with the outside world is paramount. It's a huge part. You know, and if people on a jury knew that if they convicted a person for a long period of time and blocked them from communicating with the world, it's going to make them even more uh, of a threat to society because they'll get out and they'll just be upset. You know, these people, these things went on out here and I didn't know anything about it. Nobody would let me go. Nobody would talk to me. Nobody would update me. How is that going to make somebody feel happy or feel that they deserved it? You know, I, I couldn't communicate with my grandmother before she died. That's my fault because I got locked up. Now, the jury needs to know that if you're going to put a person in there, we need to follow the rules. We need to see to it that they can, can continue to communicate. And I can't emphasize that enough. We need to stop that. There's technical issues and then there's just man-made issues. So uh, why not keep this uh, line of communication open all the time? Let people visit. Let people write letters and emails. And then concentrate on the real things that <clears throat> could cause them to uh, fall. You know, it's, uh, I would say medical is important. Communication is important. And uh, education is important. And we need to teach them things that they ask for. Now, if a person is having problems balancing a budget, we'll get into that. If a person wants to become a carpenter, we should allow them to become a carpenter. And it, it's like a, a band-aid. You know, there's a, there's a harm that was committed with the crime. And then you put this band-aid on and then it sits on until it's the, the wound heals and then they can go back to normal. Instead of looking at the prison as like another dagger that's opening the wound or salt that's aggravating the wound, we should look at prison as the band-aid and give it time to heal, protect it from the evils of the world. I don't know why we're so against that. Why don't you want the people to come out better? Why do you want to lock them up forever? Nothing is permanent on this planet. Once you die, everything that you've done, all your accomplishments become a part of history. But when you have family and friends out there, they'll remember that. And in many cases, the entire world will remember something that you've done. You're not invisible. You're not useless to the world. Every human being has a purpose. And every human being is important to the success of our community. And that includes people that are locked up. If anything, the folks that are locked up have a massive amount of information that can be shared with the world. I do interviews with folks. I ask them to talk to the, the audience. Let them know what can be done to improve things. Let them know what happened in your life that we can avoid. 
And creating laws, creating restrictions created by people who have never been there, haven't talked to the incarcerated people or the people that's that's contemplating suicide, how can you help them? I think the professionals, psychologists, sociologists, you know, just plain maybe even a urologist or something, any any ologist out there, any medical professional knows more about situations than the common citizen. And those are folks that can help us improve our uh, justice system and our penal system. And until we realize that, crime is not going to go away. It's going to continue to rise because we're just focusing on the wrong thing. Well, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you check out my YouTube channel. I've added a few things in there. Just kind of peck, perk it up a little bit to, to encourage people to uh, subscribe. But uh, listen to some of these interviews. Discuss them with your friends and family. Together we can, we can reduce crime. So go out and have yourself a wonderful day. And make beautiful memories for tomorrow.